Hey guys, you're watching Editing with Emery. Today I'm going to go over how to export. There's a ton of different settings you could be using when you're exporting, but it's really important to understand each setting and what it's best for. So we have our sequence here, just one clip and some audio. The first thing I'm going to do before exporting is mark in and out points and render. So I'm marking my in and outs here, and I'm going to go to sequence, render into out. And a lot of people don't think that this is necessary, but it actually speeds up your exporting process. Whenever you compile clips or effects, your computer needs to process that. And that's what rendering is. So I always recommend rendering before you export. So now to export, you can either go to command M if you're in the sequence window, or you can go to file, export, media. So here we see our sequence and we see a bunch of different settings here. A lot of you will probably just go to match sequence settings. That's fine if you set up your sequence settings beforehand. I recommend that you actually look through these options and make sure that your export is the right format and that it's going to the right place on your hard drive. So I'm going to uncheck that and we're going to take a look at this first category, format. Right now I have H.264 selected, but you can take a look at these other options we have here. Another very popular one would be QuickTime, or if you're doing audio, you can put out a WAV file or an AIFF. For now, I want to address the difference between QuickTime and H.264. Now these are called codecs. It's basically how the file is contained and compressed. If you're making a film or video to be screened in a movie theater or in front of an audience, I would recommend doing a QuickTime file. This is going to be a high quality export and also a large file, mainly because it includes more information. So let's go through what a QuickTime export would look like. So we're going to go to Format QuickTime. And for my footage that I have here, I'm going to be selecting Apple ProRes 422HQ. This is just a high quality codec that will produce an MOV file. Then we want to make sure that the file has the correct name and that it's going to the correct place. In order to do that, you can just click on this blue file right here. And this will open up your Finder window. The default is that this export will show up in my project folder, which I don't want. I'm going to click here and go to my main folder and go to export. And I'm going to set it to save in here. It's really important to organize these files on your drive so that you know where things are and that nothing gets lost. I'm going to go over that in detail in another video. For now, save your file to this export folder you've created. Then we definitely want to click export video and export audio. This little summary will show you what kind of file you're putting out and the file path here. You can adjust these individual settings below. So let's scroll down and we see video codec, Apple ProRes 422 HQ. And then we can just leave these settings for the video Make sure the quality is 100, that the dimensions are correct, the frame rate is correct. We don't really need to look at the advanced settings right now. You can also check your audio. This is the proper sample rate for film. Music is a different sample rate, so be sure to know what you're working with. The sample size is 16-bit. If you recorded a higher sample size, you can adjust that here. A lot of my sound recordists will record 24-bit. We just want to make sure that that's the highest quality possible. We have a stereo output. You can also take a look at the effects. I wouldn't use a lot of these for a final export, but definitely in the post-production process, I have used a couple of these effects, such as timecode overlay. This is if you're giving your footage to a sound designer or a colorist. It needs to all be starting from the same exact point so that when the sound designer is creating the mix and the colorist is making the final grade, that when you bring the files back together, they all line up. I'll get into this process in a separate video. For now, let's remove that. And then we simply will hit export. Now we're going to export another version to compare it to. 
So we're going to go Command M and we're going to change that format to H264. And you can leave your preset match source high bit rate. You can change the name of your file if you want. This is fine for our purposes, but it might be helpful if you're doing one MOV and one H264. You can label them differently. Again, export video, export audio. We're going to go to the video setting. Match source for the frame rate and the aspect ratio. Hardware encoding we can leave. Now for the bitrate settings, I normally do VBR one pass and I make that target bitrate about 15 if I'm putting it on YouTube or Vimeo. You can also do VBR two pass, which basically means that it's going to encode the video twice. It's up to you. Audio, this all looks good. And now we're going to export this file. So now I'm going to pull up my finder and go to the export folder and you can see these two exports here and I'll play both for you so that you can compare them. That was the QuickTime and here is the H264 file. Not much of a difference. Remember that the ProRes file is going to be for screenings and final exports. This is going to be a much larger file. That's actually more noticeable if you have a longer video. My video is only a few seconds long, so the difference is not huge. If you're exporting a 20 minute short film that was shot in 4K, it could be up to 20 gigabytes. The benefit of the MP4 file or the H.264 is that it's a much smaller file size, but it maintains a lot of the quality. It's much better to upload an MP4 to YouTube because the file is more compressed. When you upload a huge file online, it will have to go through the site's compression. So you might as well compress that file first so that the online site has to do less work. It's also much faster to upload. If you have any more questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I look forward to reading them and helping you take your editing to the next level. So thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like button if it was helpful or subscribe.